our first car wash because because <laughs> we're uh, pretty lazy <laughs> I already washed it by hand once going to get right into it. Starting where we left off from the last video, uh, we re the plugs, full throttle run, still had a misfire at the upper end. Uh, the log files I've taken up to that point have not been very useful. I accidentally had the uh, scanner recording all 200 parameters, so the latency is ridiculous. I'm getting like a timestamp every two seconds, so it's not, it's not very useful information. So more or less I had to start from scratch there, but there was one thing I wanted to do before I went before I started troubleshooting anything farther, and that was to put the partition plates back in the cylinder head that uh, work in conjunction with the flaps in the intake manifold, and we'll go over that now. I put the uh, partition plates back in on the intake. That's just some fuel it went down in that cylinder when I pulled the intake back off. I'll go over a little bit of why I left those plates out. Obviously I was mistaken in my research and my decision making on that part. Um, that's definitely going to smooth out our startup idling issue. Alright guys, so we've got the old cylinder head um, just as an example here. We're going to focus on what is the point of the partition plates in conjunction with the flaps in the intake manifold for whichever variation of the two liter um, motor you've got. So stratified fuel injection, simply put, stratified, you're vaporizing the fuel so you're able to run a leaner mixture of, of fuel in the combustion chamber. You're actually able to run the motor lean and still create power without knock. What that's doing is uh, so you have homogeneous and stratified. Homogeneous follows stoichiometric, which is one, basically one part atmosphere to one part um, fuel. But stratified allows you to run much leaner air fuel ratios without suffering, without, without hindering performance or making any less power. And in fact, using less fuel to do that. So what it, stratified fuel injection is doing is it's pressurizing the fuel and vaporizing it th by use of the injector. Um, but, but what's happening during stratified injection is it's um, creating a richer vapor around the spark plug and a, and a leaner vapor in the cylinder. So the point of having these plates in here is this. So once your flaps are in the fully closed position or fully up position rather, they of course work in conjunction with your partition plate. So for instructional purposes we're just using that to show you. It's only allowing air through the upper portion of the intake throat. So roughly put, you're only allowing air to travel down that path, the upper path, which is only allowing air to hit the back side of the valves in the orientation we're looking at it. So because it's only hitting the back of the valves, it's forcing the air to change direction. So what's happening with a traditional dished piston, the air is being sucked in and it's creating a spiral effect in the combustion chamber because we are only allowing air in the upper portion. We are forcing the air to hit the back of the valves and flow out this, flow out and around this way. So you're creating a vortice in the combustion chamber with the help of the dome, or the dish, rather. So there's our injector, a bolt. During strati stratified fuel injection, the air is creating a vortice, it's creating a swirl, and that, that air is traveling back up and what are we doing we're injecting a smaller amount of fuel in a higher pressure but the air is now carrying it 
into the spark plug. And that richer mixture around the spark plug will allow your, your lean mixture to ignite. So, and then of course, your power stroke. The flaps are, fun, are operational between 1,000 and 5,000 RPM. Um, it's to help aid fuel efficiency on the highway. The flaps aren't just working in conjunction to, for, uh, for stratified injection. They're actually able in a variable to change the, the speed and the direction the air is hitting the back of the valves in any given orientation. With all that said, and how interesting that is, and, and learning more about this engine against my will, when I decided to leave those partition plates out of the cylinder head, that was stupid. <laughs> so, don't do what I did. Somehow I thought that was going to be, you know, I thought, oh, that's a restriction in the cylinder head. Well, n not at all. That's that's just not how that, it's, the, they're designed to be there. And on full throttle above 5,000 RPM, the flaps are wide open. The intake manifold, the flaps are wide open. You can see there's a recess in the runner and the flap's actually on a fulcrum and it actually gets down out of the way. You can remove that entire system, but until you're looking at 400 plus horsepower on one of these motors, there's no point. I mean, unless you're just, you have a track oriented car, then, then of course you can do whatever you want. But if you are daily driving the car and occasionally take a road trip in it from now and then, just leave it, just leave it alone. Don't think you're getting extra power by just removing this or removing that. Obviously, yes, they can be tuned out. There's kits to remove them. RPM. Three thousand RPM. Four thousand RPM. All right, guys, so this is the result of that run uh, while I was just doing a sustained speed at 2,000 RPM, 3,000 RPM, and 4,000 RPM in second gear. Uh, it's not really showing us anything out of the ordinary. I just wanted to make sure uh, our AFRs were correct for what was being commanded. You can see we're, we're close enough to what it's requesting. Uh, not much else to look at at the moment because later in the video we're going to compare this run to an, an identical run after we make another uh, repair. Uh, but you can see here, 2,000 RPM, uh, about the median point of that. Up here we're at about 3,000 3, RPM. Uh, same difference, we're just looking at our AFRs, making sure we're good, making sure there's nothing com totally out of whack. We're making the requested charge pressure we're holding the requ the requested uh, uh injection pressure uh the next run um was done shortly after this run it is a full throttle pull we're in second gear we go from 3000 rpm uh up up the rev range
Okay, got what I needed. This is a breakdown of the run we just saw. We'll try to be quick here. Uh, what we can see over here, our acceleration part uh, points, ex uh, engine speed, ignition angle, etc. This is our, our O2 reading. So starting for where, from where we went full throttle. Um, so I use a Snap-on Solus. It's not the quickest logging device. There is some latency no matter how many of these you have set. So we can start right here where we go where we go from a cruising uh, from like 3% throttle to full throttle. So what's the first thing it does? Timing drops to like negative 6. Each cylinder sets a retard 10 degrees right off the bat. Uh, this was a little confusing at first. I, I wasn't sure why the engine's accelerating. Obviously, full throttle run. The engine didn't pick up an increase in RPM until this point. So we're picking up RPM. You can see the latency. You can see how much data is missing between 3120 and 4000 RPM. That's just one of those unfortunate, unfortunate circumstances of, of the tool I'm using to, to take these log files. Uh, ignition uh, timing has advanced slightly back to, to actually zero, but we're still retarded 10 degrees. Uh, our boost pressure is at, uh, let's do the math quick. So this, so our, our graph is in millibar. Uh, remember at sea level, we are at one atmosphere, which is 14.7, uh, 14.69. So in millibar, that's 1,013. So at the, at the elevation we're at, we're at exactly 1,000 millibar. So we're just above sea level slightly, uh, roughly 375, 400 feet above sea level, which puts our atmospheric at 14.5. Again, 1,013.25 uh, is atmospheric, we're at 1,000. So we need to reduce that from our current current boost pressure at this position so in this case you got to do where right now we're at 1890 millibar we subtract the atmospheric so you multiply that by 0.0145 and we're at 12.9 psi of, of boost every engine is a boosted engine because we are in an, a boosted atmosphere at, at the moment where you're sitting where there is 14.7 pounds per square inch of pressure being exerted on you, but you don't feel that, and which you can look that up and get your mind blown about that later. So every engine is a boosted engine, just not in the way you think. So we are we are reaching max boost, but we're not really. But the engine's not really the engine's not pulling as hard as it should. Our timing is is not where it should be. So this is this is a situation where we do have some useful data and I'm not mentioning the knock sensor voltages right now because there is there's a little bit of lost in translation with this as, as far as my experience usually and your voltages are between two and five volts on the reference but not on 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 Volkswagen Audi stuff as far as I know um, it's more of a you need to actually have a separate, like it'd be called a scope. You need it, it with like a spectrometer kind of deal with different points and every, it's that's the right way to 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 observe knock. I was getting two counts of the same code, uh, P0327, knock sensor one, signal too low, uh, and I believe at some point I had another one that had to do with the voltage readings were too low. So these readings are supposed to be higher not not lower 
again, it, it gets a little confusing and I'm not a subject matter expert on it, uh, but we wound up having to put a knock sensor on the engine. Uh, and this run is a result, this run is what happens when you have a bad knock sensor. Let's get back to it. We're making 12, 12 and a half pounds of boost. Uh, we're full throttle, the engine's increasing RPM. Again, uh, timing is it advanced a little bit back from uh, negative six. It's throwing an attempt at zero now, but we're still retarded 10 degrees. Um, again, nothing's happening at this point until we get to the next time, the next stamp, which jumps from 4,080 to 5,280. RPM, you know, it can imagine how much useful data there is in between that jump, but we're just, we're stuck with what I've got at the moment. Um, so you can see right away, all of a sudden we've picked up 34 misfires. Now, timing has advanced. So between, between 4,000 and 5,200 RPM, the engine has advanced the timing at least eight degrees from what we can see, but we picked up a misfire. We picked up multiple miss cylinder misfires. Those were the codes we got uh, along with the knock sensor codes. You can see we're still retarded on these 10 degrees. I don't know why that wouldn't negate. Uh, but again, you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm still foot to the floor. Uh, it's retarded the uh, cam, t uh, cam advanced slightly. Um, our AFR is still, it's commanding a richer mixture. So we're running, it's wanting to see like 10 point, 10 point 10.8, which is a, which is safe. That's, that's a little too rich, but that's safe. So it's commanding an enrichment, but it's advanced the timing. I mean, it's seen misfires. It hasn't pulled the timing back yet. Unfortunately, we're not really getting any, any change because of my awesome setup here until we get to this point where we do have a change. Now we've picked up more misfires. Ignition has retarded back down to negative four. We still have our baseline uh, retard on the on the ignition. Uh, we're, st we're commanding an even richer uh, fuel mixture. And of course, in the process of all this, we've dropped boost. We dropped boost pressure because the engine commanded we dropped boost pres pressure. In a, in a way to protect the motor. This is, this is not a cause. This is a reaction to what's going on in the ECM. The ECM is taking all of these numbers and trying to make something work based on my input. The only input I'm giving this computer in this car is my right foot on the throttle pedal. It's doing everything else for us. So now we've picked up misfires. The ignition's finally retarded itself. Uh, we enriching the fuel even more. It also pulled back on the rail pressure as well. The point being is something's not right with the engine. Luckily, it's giving us a code. Two of them were the knock sensor voltage, and the rest of them were multiple cylinder misfires. So by the time we get to this point, which is right here, I've let off the throttle. You can see immediately our timing went back up. It, re it removed our baseline timing. So we're back at five degrees, we're back at suddenly 32 degrees advanced, 59 misfires. And of course now it's actually saying, hey, we can have more boost because it's still, it still shows a little bit of more boost because I haven't let off completely. Or the, I haven't let the throttle off completely. Um, I'm still at about 80%. Um, so we're still actually making, making uh, 12 PSI. RPM is dropped, and basically our uh, AFR is commanding back close enough to a one-to-one -one ratio. So there's not much more to look at, guys. Uh, this stuff's all very interesting. It's fun to watch. It's fun to learn all this stuff as we go. And it is unfortunate that there's such a latency in these recordings. I really can't see um, what's going on between huge sweeps of the RPM. So let's move on to the unfortunate circumstance we find ourselves in, I have to replace the knock sensor.